Hey there, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Hockey Raiders News and Rumors Rundown for the NHL. My name is Jim Parsons. I'm here with thehockeyraiders.com. Lots going on in the world of hockey today, uh, this week. Lots of rumors, trade speculation, job security issues, all sorts of stuff that we're going to be talking about. But just a quick reminder, you can follow us in a couple different ways. If you want to go to thehockeyraiders.com, you can check us out on the website. If you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at the Hockey Writer. Check us out on facebook.com slash thehockeyraiders. Sign up for our newsletter at morningskate.io or go to the YouTube page, check out all the great content that's happening there on a regular basis from a number of different contributors at the Hockey Raiders. All right, let's get right into it. Lots to talk about today. Uh, We'll start with Kevin Fiala out of the Minnesota Wild organization. He struggled a lot with Minnesota this season. There was some questionable, well, not questionable, but some decisions made by the organization that they weren't going to extend him long term, so they went with an arbitrator salary. He's got a one-year deal. It's not looking like he's going to be a part of the long-term solution here. So there's talk that maybe he could be on the trade block this season, whether or not he's actually moved or the Minnesota Wild hang on to him and revisit the idea of extending him on a longer term later. But there's some unsatisfaction between the organization and Kevin Fiala. and It's not really sure where this is all going to end up, but there's a lot of commitments the Minnesota Wild need to make to other players, and Kevin Fiala might not be in that long-term equation. So we'll see or keep our eyes on this player and see if there's any movement there. But... Uh, there's been some talk that maybe his name has popped up a couple times in the trade rumor mill. When it comes to Sammy Blaze and the New York Rangers, the Rangers are out there looking for a forward to replace Blaze, who was injured. It's not clear exactly who and what they're looking for, but Darren Dreger of TSN says a middle six forward is kind of where they're eyeballing everything. That could be anybody from Phil Kessel to... There's just a number of names that are possibly out there uh, that could be traded. Now it's early because there's a lot of teams that are not out of the hunt yet. But when you got teams like Seattle and Arizona... Uh, Chicago maybe with somebody like Dylan Strum. You never really know where these guys are at at this point in the season. So the Rangers are looking. They're also looking for a potential backup goaltender. And Alexander Georgiev has struggled mightily this season. He's not very happy with the Rangers. He's not very happy with his position. And the Rangers aren't really sure what to do with him. Also, Ryan Strom has not talked to the Rangers about a contract extension at all. They haven't had any conversations whatsoever in terms of him uh, sticking with the team after this season. So it looks like this is going to be a showcase year for him. If he, he plays well, he could wind up with another team. Maybe he gets traded. Maybe he just signs with somebody else in the summer. But keep our eyes on Ryan Strom and how he plays this year because it doesn't look like an extension is coming with the Rangers at some point this season. Lots of talk surrounding the Montreal Canadiens. Now, Mark Bergevin is out with COVID right now, but he did take time for an interview with Pierre Lebrun, and he said, look, I'm not going to make a trade just to make a trade. It's not a lateral move I'm looking at. That's not the way to win here. we got to get back on track. Our own players got to be better. But there is still talk about what's going to happen here in Montreal, whether or not they're going to be selling, who they're going to be moving. Lots of names coming up here. Ben Sherratt, defenseman, is probably the biggest one so far. It's expected that he's probably going to be traded, and there's going to be lots of teams interested, the Islanders, the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, Teams that need a left-shot defenseman who can play a bunch of minutes, pretty stable. He's a pending UFA, so he's looking at a raise. $3 million salary this season, so it's an affordable contract for a lot of teams. There's also talk that somebody like Brendan Gallagher might be out there. Now, that one's a lot less likely, not only because he's just signed an extension with the team uh, just about, about a year ago, but... He's got a contract that's a little harder to move, and they do believe he's going to be an excellent player. It's just he's going through a little bit of a rough patch right now. So we'll see, and we'll keep our eyes on the Canadians because they may make some moves here. It looks like they're out of the picture. They're not technically out of the picture, but they're struggling a lot here, so we'll see what kind of moves they make. When it comes to the Boston Bruins and Tuka Rask, stories on this change repeatedly. Tuka Rask has said that he wants to come back to the Bruins. He's not worried about the money part of it. The Bruins have said that they want him back. But there's also Linus Olmark. Jeremy Swayman. The Bruins are okay at goal, so they don't necessarily need Tuka Rask. He does want to come back and play. It's looking like early maybe February 2022. We'll see. The Oilers have been connected to this one because their goaltending situation is a little iffy. Obviously, the Rangers would be interested in Tuka Rask if that was an option for them. So there's lots to talk about here with Tuka Rask. Now, most people think he stayed with Boston. That's the reality. Let's put that out there right now. That said, there's been enough reports from people like Chris Johnston and others who have said, don't rule out the possibility that he'll go to a contender if they can't make it work in Boston. So we'll keep our eyes on that one too. Vancouver Canucks' Jim Benning did meet with the ownership of the team. They aren't making any changes right now. Travis Green, his job may or may not be safe. Jim Benning's job may or may not be safe. But right now, they're not going to be making any major moves. Uh, They probably could make a trade if they really wanted to, but doesn't look like personnel, executives, things like that, coaches, 
uh, GMs are going to lose their jobs. But if the Vancouver Canucks continue to struggle, you never know what's going to happen here. So we'll keep our eyes on that story as well. And finally, the Quebec government is meeting and has met with Gary Bettman about the possibility that the Quebec Nordiques return to the NHL. Mixed reactions to this story. Mostly people are thinking this is a political move, uh, that this is one of those things where government wants to look good while there's an election potentially going on there and that the team really isn't coming back to the NHL and that Gary Bettman is happy with 32 teams. There's really no reason to bring the Quebec Nordiques back, not to mention who knows how that would affect the Montreal Canadiens. Still, the story's out there. The meeting did happen. That's been confirmed by both sides. So we'll see if there's anything to this at all. But uh, don't expect the Quebec Nordiques to be something that really gets a lot of steam. But of course, it's going to get some, some attention because of the fact that it's a former team in the NHL. It's a Canadian market. We'll see. But that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, don't forget, check out thehockeywriters.com. Check out boardingskate.io, the newsletter, as well. Go to the YouTube page, the Facebook page, Twitter page, and everywhere else. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Have a good one.